The first drag and drop demo that I have prepared for you shows you the very basics of setting up a drag and drop feature on your page. So first, let me run the code. And now I can drag this element here from its point of origin into the drop source. Now, because of the way I have it set up, I can't drop it back or take it anywhere else. This is just the very basics of enabling drag and drop on the page. So as we take a look at the markup, you can see that there's two divs that support this page. First one is marked with the ID of source container, and the second one is the target container. Now inside I have an image for the Pluralsight logo, and I've set the draggable attribute to true. Now in many browsers, links, images, and text don't even need to be specifically configured to be draggable, but I'm showing you how to do this just to make it explicit. So as we turn our attention to the JavaScript, let's start down at the bottom first. So the first thing that I need to do is get a reference to the logo itself. The logo image will be the drag source. And since it's the drag source, what I want to do is handle the drag start event. So when drag start fires, the drag start function will be called. Now for the drop container, there's a minimum of three events that need to be handled. So here I have reference to the drop container. And then I need to handle drop, drag enter, and drag over. Now you'll notice that drag enter and drag over both just call the cancel function. So all I'm doing here is canceling the default behavior and letting it go on its merry way. The only logic that's implemented for the drop target is here in the dropped function. We'll take a look at that in a minute. So first, let's look at the cancel function. In order to cancel the default behavior, which allows drag and drop to happen within the browser, you need to call prevent default, stop propagation, and return false. Now I've got a little extra checking in here just to make sure those functions actually exist within the event args. But those are the three operations that you need to do in order to cancel the default behavior. So now let's take a look at the drag start function. So you can see what logic is required in order to initiate a drag operation. Now what the drag start function does here is it transfers some information from the source to the target when the drop action happens. So what we'll do is use the data transfer object in order to set some data, in this case being the ID of the element we're dragging, and pass it over to the drop target so that once the drop happens, it can access that information. Now make sure not to get mixed up here. This e.target does not refer to the drop target itself. That's just the target of the event. So when we call e.target.id, that's the ID of the drag source. Now as the comment says, Internet Explorer doesn't support content plane. In fact, the only content type it supports is text. So by nesting the logic here within a try catch block, the logic for just about any other browser will work here if it tries to set the data for text slash plane, but Internet Explorer will fall back to just using the text content type. And I'll use similar logic when the item is dropped in order to extract the data out and be able to complete the drag and drop operation. Okay, now let's take a look at dropped. Once the element is dropped in the drop target, the first thing that needs to happen is, of course, cancel the default behavior. So the call to cancel is the first thing done here, and I'm making sure to pass in the event args so that prevent default and stop propagation end up being called correctly. Then what I want to do is extract out the ID of the element that's being dragged and eventually add it to the drop target. So here, target refers to the drop target, again, because it's the target of the event that's being fired. So once I have that ID, I can simply select it out of the DOM and append it into the drop target. So the way I get that information is by looking at the event args, looking at the data transfer object, and calling get data. In drag start, the function was called set data. Here we're calling get data. Now we want the information that's in the content area for text slash plane. And so if this executes, I'll get the ID that was dragged placed into the ID variable. But if this is Internet Explorer, it'll drop down to the catch block and it will attempt to extract out the ID information from the content type of just text. So that's the very basics. You need to make sure to handle drag start on the drag source, dropped, drag enter, and drag over for the drop target, and make sure you're canceling the default behavior on each one of those events.